everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Ultimate Supply Chain Podcast. As you can see, I'm in a different location today. I'm here live in Florida. We're face to face for the first time with our customer development team at our conference. It's the first time we've met since the pandemic and I'm super excited to be talking to my boss, Patrick Kelleher, Chief Development Officer and Member of the Board at DHL Supply Chain. Hi there, Patrick. I'm Hi, Lou. Welcome. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to be here. Brilliant. So, look, before we start our conversation today, can you just tell us a bit about your background at DHL Supply Chain, about your journey so far? Yeah, sure. So I, I, uh, I joined DHL Supply Chain almost 30 years ago. Surely not. You when don't look old I was 23 older. years old, 23 years old when I joined. Um, I, I joined in the U.S., we were a British-owned company as Excel then, and uh, the company in the U.S. was about $200 million total revenue, and it's been an incredible journey for me. I've, I've had the opportunity to see uh, the company grow, to see supply chain outsourcing grow. Uh, it has been particularly rewarding uh, because we, we do have a lot of people like myself who have spent an equal amount or more time with the company, so we've all been able to grow with the organization together. It's been really rewarding to see uh, individuals develop their careers, their families benefit from that, um, and to really build something that is personal sure. uh, in the way that we go about doing business every day. Which of them, um, I'm guessing over that time, you've had quite a few roles. Which has been your favorite role? Apart from this one, because this one clearly is your favorite, but apart from this one, which roles have you found most rewarding along your journey so far? H hands down, I always say solution design. Oh, really? uh, that was. If, I, if uh, I could go back in time, I might not have ever left solution design. I've had roles. Uh, my first job was telemarketing. So I was in marketing when I, when I first started. Uh, I was in project management roles, operation roles. Uh, but very early in my career, I spent uh, about four years in solution design. And that probably was the most exciting role that I've had, probably second to the one that I'm in now. Good I, catch. Uh, I really enjoyed the process of putting together solutions for customers, being involved in the engineering of solutions, but also the customer facing activity that comes with that. I think it is probably the number one place where somebody can learn our business quickly yeah. and have a really big impact. Yeah, well, look, I did take the opportunity, whilst there's a lot of people together here, to ask what characterizes you. Mm -hmm. um, and the vast majority of people have said your passion for solutions for our customers. So I'm not surprised that you've called out solution design for our customers as the thing that you've enjoyed the most. So That um, is completely coincidental. I did not know that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, look, let's, um, let's take it up a notch and think about the, the big picture in supply chain. We all know that the global context is changing. We're just coming out of a pandemic. Um, we are witnessing geopolitical changes like none of us have ever seen in our lifetimes. Huge economic challenges and, and more to come by the sound of it. Climate change. As a senior leader in the world's largest contract logistics business, how would you evaluate all of that in terms of its impact on supply chains? Yeah, so it, it, it is something that we look at as a business that we monitor on a consistent basis. Um, as you said, it's, it's fair to say there are significant changes happening in the world that are having huge impacts on supply chains globally. Um, much, much of that we, we wish would not have happened in COVID or is happening in terms of climate change and the impacts that uh, that's having, uh, or things that uh, are, are more local in terms of uh, the availability of labor to deliver solutions for customers, execute supply chain solutions. Um, so we, we wouldn't wish for those things. Um, that being said, they do exist in the world. Uh, we're uniquely positioned to help our customers respond to that. And so we, as an organization, do really thrive when customers need to make changes in their supply chain. We have the depth and breadth in the talent that's needed to help our customers find those solutions and affect, and affect the implementation and, and consistent delivery of those solutions. Uh, so I, I think that we can play a really meaningful role going forward in helping our customers to achieve their objectives, help our communities achieve their objectives, uh, and to play a really significant role in the world in terms of advancing the agenda of things like climate change, uh, continuing to facilitate global trade, which I, which I think is absolutely paramount 
to solving some of the geopolitical issues that are out there as well. And so we really are today at the center of uh, what our customers care about the most and I think what our neighbors care about the most as well. Yeah. So does it keep you up at night? And if it does, is that with excitement or fear? Well, it, it, it keeps me up at night for sure. Um, I wouldn't describe excitement for the challenges that exist in the world. I'm excited for the way that we're positioned to respond to those challenges today. And we've really worked hard to build ourselves up over the, the many decades that I've been here in order to be in a position to do that. Uh, if there's anything I, I lose sleep over, it is around continuing to attract and retain the best talent in the industry. We have the best talent in the industry today. Um, it is challenging in today's environment to retain talent. Uh, that is gonna be, I think, our sole differentiator as we look to 2025 and beyond is can we continue to have the best people working to create the best solutions for customers in a way that uh, our customers trust us to implement those and continue to operate that. So I know as a board, we're focused really hard on what are those things that we can do to really be a great company to work for um, and how do we make sure that uh, our associates are feeling the same way. And in your experience, you have a lot of experience with customers. You, you interact with customers every day. Um, is that talent gap something that they're concerned about? Are you having conversations with them about how we're going to continue to have the best talent and to serve them? Yeah, ab absolutely. With our uh, large customers, it's a conversation we have every day um, in really dissecting what should we be doing for customers? What should they be resourcing to execute? And in many cases, our customers, large customers, are looking for us to execute many elements of the supply chain that they have traditionally done for themselves that they're not in a position to retain the talent to execute today. For our medium and small size customers, the gap is even bigger. They're not in a position to recruit and retain the best talent focused on supply chain because that is our business, because we can provide career advancement opportunities for people, the projects that are the most exciting to work on. We are absolutely I think an essential partner for small and medium sized companies, particularly as we look to 2025 and beyond. So those bigger organizations, are you seeing a change in their, um, their approach and their opinion of outsourcing and their propensity to outsource? I, I, I think absolutely. You, you probably know better than me what's the percentage of uh, I wish I did. total <laughs> supply chain spend that is outsourced. It's under 20% today. Is it? It is. And so the marketplace opportunity for us is huge. I always say, five years ago, to try and convince a customer to outsource an in-source solution today yeah. um, was really challenging. We'd say, we can save you a 10% off your cost, and maybe they didn't think that was enough to risk making a change and taking something that is in-source and outsourcing it. Now those same customers are calling us, yeah. saying, hey, five years ago, you told me you could save me 10% off my supply chain costs or improve supply chain agility, speed, service. Uh, and so the appetite for customers to engage us is increasing uh, dramatically. We're seeing that in, in the pipeline that we have in our business and the level of conversations that we're having with customers are at a significantly more senior level than what we would have seen even like five years ago. And is cost the, still the primary reason for people to outsource? Cost, cost is always important to customers, but yep. it is dropping dramatically in the level of importance. I think most important to customers is operational execution, finding a third party partner that they know can execute the solution for them. Um, they're looking for partners who bring a breadth of technology, digital solutions and robotics, uh, software solutions and a mastery of those solutions to implement those with uh, confidence. Um, and providers that can move with agility and flexibility to change as the world's changing as, and as supply chains are changing. Amazing. And um, what role do you think our brand plays in that? Uh, I, I think the brand is huge. We get calls from customers because we are DHL. Uh, we provide amazing customer experiences today across all of the divisions of DHL, particularly with the small, medium-sized customers. Uh, our brand is a huge differentiator both in attracting great customers, but also in attracting and retaining the best talent, mm -hmm. which is an incredible combination. And it is. I think really sort of amplifies the need to continue to invest in the brand. Sure. So let's go back to some of those global changes that we talked about a moment ago. 
Um, digital. We've all seen a tremendous rise in the demand for digital. In terms of customer expectations, what's changing for them? What are you hearing from our customers? Well, I, I used the word earlier, mastery. I think our, our customers are expecting us to experiment with many of the technology solutions that are out there, the digital solutions, robotics, and to really identify those that are going to work and succeed and to implement those with mastery. And we do see it today. We have great examples with uh, Locust Robots, for example, where we are implementing a solution alongside of our customer, each putting it into an outsourced solution that we operate or an in-source in -source solution that they operate we deliver far more productivity in the way that we implement Locust Robots than our customers can do for themselves. So it, it really is more complex than just turning on the robot and letting it do its work. There's immense work that goes into how that robot integrates with the individual performing the most important work, how that robot interfaces with the balance of our technology, how we manage the flow of work associated with that. Our customers really expect us to have mastery of that and to bring that mastery to bear for them. Yeah, it, Melissa and I was lucky enough, we were there together on the mm -hmm. site that had those Locust Bots four or five weeks ago. Right. And to see them we in action. We won't say the customer name, but we were We won't say there. the customer name. <laughs> um, but to see them in action and to be able to interact with them and to feel the difference it makes for our workforce, um, you know, those people who worry that robotics are gonna take over, they really do enhance the role that our own people play. It's incredible, isn't it? it? Really when you is. get to interact it's with them. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, so I guess that works on a tactical level. It's really changing the way we might pick and pack or the way we interact at a very, very tactical level for our customers. Mm -hmm. What changes are the rise is the rise in digitalization making to customers' long-term supply chain strategies? Well, I think uh, the availability of data is transforming what we can do for our customers and, and uh, what the customers expect of us in how we're able to analyze data and help our customers make good decisions around changes that need to happen quickly in the supply chain, adjustments that need to be made. Um, when the port of Shanghai is closed because of COVID in China, our customers have to adjust quickly and we have to leverage data technology in order to make that adjustment happen. There are smaller events that happen in the supply chain, a road closure, an airline cancellation. A few of our associates felt that this week. Exactly. Um, you've got to be able to see that right away and adjust quickly the supply chain so it does not disrupt the things that are happening downstream to that. So it, uh, I think it, pl it plays a really important role in orchestration of the supply chain. I think the availability of that data also sets the stage for better strategic analysis around how the supply chain can deliver our customers' overall business objectives. So how, what role can supply chain play in increasing sales mm -hmm. or building resilience or actually enabling our customers to deliver new products and services maybe because they can deliver a product faster or at a lower cost has the potential to open new markets for our customers as well. And are you seeing customers' um, point of view change in terms of the amount of data they're prepared to share with us? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think our customers are becoming increasingly less protective about their own data and seeing the value of their data living in a repository of lots of data interacting. So if you're a customer, to not have your customers sit in an environment where we have carrier data, where we can see what's happening uh, across different nodes of the supply chain, um, they're, they're not maximizing the full value of their data. If they're, if they're not open with it. Yeah, and, and if you start to think about the brand, it does make me wonder whether in five years time, we'll still be describing ourselves as a contract logistics company, or whether we might be con talking more about our ability to integrate data, to orchestrate data, just makes you wonder where the brand is going. So if you put yourself in the shoes of one of our customers, Mm -hmm. What questions should a CEO or a CFO be asking themselves at the moment about their supply chain? Well, uh, we, we get a lot of questions today on what are we doing to recruit and retain the best talent. Questions about how are we actioning the ESG agenda across all three pillars, looking for very specific examples of what we're doing to make sure we fulfill the promises that we make 
as a brand across those three pillars. Um, and, and I think it's really about at the sea level testing whether or not the things that we're articulating around the values that we have, the things that are important to us, the things that we're focused on are really coming to life, particularly across those agendas of people and, and uh, ESG. A subject that is very dear to my heart, and I know it's dear to yours, is around sales and marketing coming together and being more than aligned than ever as a business function. As this develops, what changes do you expect to see in our relationship with customers? Yep. You know, Lou, that, I, that I've, I started messaging this when I took my role in 2018. Three years ago, four years ago? Four years ago. Um, I saw it when we were together at Williams Lee Tag. Yeah. I had the opportunity to, to be inside of our customers' organizations of some of the leading brands, P&G, Coca-Cola, and so forth. And I really saw the impact that digital marketing was having for their business and the importance that they saw in it. Uh, I was really passionate early on that digital marketing especially is gonna play a huge role in B2B sales. Um, our customers, we know, prefer at the front end of the sales process, 68, 70% of the time, prefer to engage us digitally. They wanna get very specific information and knowledge about our products and services before they speak to somebody. They expect our salespeople to be at the same point in the customer journey as they are when they start that conversation, which means our salespeople have to be engaging with our customers digitally and understand where they are and understand how to use our tools digitally to understand where customers are. And then our customers have points in the journey that they want to continue to engage with us digitally versus face-to-face. -face. And, and look, this is one of the things we've been doing here today. Um, you know, the sales and marketing teams are far closer than I've ever known. Yeah. Um, we're having conversations, we're exchanging ideas, we're each getting on board with each other's agendas. It's starting to feel more natural. It reminded me a little bit of interacting with those local spots, actually. Mm -hmm. It's where technology and in-person come together and you get something that's bigger than the sum of the parts. Yeah. Um, and if we're able to provide that for our customers, then I really do feel it could be truly differentiating yeah. um, for them as well as for us. Um, Digital marketing, our marketing team, uh, are huge contributors to the Pack of Wolves um, process that we have in place today. We are really going to amplify that as we're going forward here. Yeah, I mean, I think it's true to say we're starting to see the salesperson as a key point of focus rather mm -hmm. than a key point of contact. Correct. Um, and it really is, you know, the tip of the spear, as Joe says. Um, and that's the difference I think we can make as we move forward. Amazing. Yeah. Patrick, there's a question, last but not least, it's a question I ask all my guests. What does connecting people in, and improving lives mean to you? Well, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's pretty simple, actually. So, as an example, this week at the CDO conference, for a team building activity, we gave everyone who's here the opportunity to pick from one of six, I believe it is, community service products. Yeah. I was really passionate that this was something that would be part of the conference. It was something that we did uh, when I had sales conferences in North America. Mm -hmm. It is an opportunity for our people to connect with each other, spending a half a day doing something that is not work related. Yeah. It is about connecting with our community and obviously about improving lives in the work that we're doing for people who are less fortunate than ourselves and, uh, and need a boost. And I think we have to be very deliberate and carving time out of our day, whether it be about how we interact with each other one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. and connecting with each other, and we can improve each other's lives in, in just a small one-on-one -on -one interaction to doing the customer ser the uh, community service projects that we're gonna embark on this week, to embracing the things that we're doing as an organization on a big scale, like the distribution of vaccines. Yeah. And, and I think if we focus on that at each and every level, um, it makes our work more fulfilling. Uh, we can't help make a difference in individual people's lives, groups of people and communities we live in and the world that we live in. And I think it's just a great way to live life. It really is. And, and look, you've just said it's something you're really passionate about. That passion rubs off. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you that what people are talking about here is the fact that there is a choice. You can go and do something that you're passionate about that mm -hmm. makes a real difference to people's lives. Yeah. Um, lots of people think that we work for a huge organization. Our job is to make rich people richer. Mm -hmm. um, it's great that we're able to enrich everybody's life through a 
just a small point, um, just the few hours that we have in a conference, uh, we can, really can make a difference. I think it could not be better said. I think when we each get to the end of our life, we won't remember how much money we have. Exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll be remembered for what we did for others. Exactly. And that, that's, uh, like I said, it's just a great way to live life. It really is. Yeah. Well, look, Patrick, thank you so much for taking time out of what I know is a really busy schedule to be able to talk to us today. Um, I'm really passionate about what we do. I know you're really passionate about what, you do, what we do. So it's been really great to be able to spend time with you and hear your insights on a large scale about what's happening in the, yeah. happening in the world. So thank you so much for spending Thank you so time. much for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, whether you're listening to this on our website or tuning in on Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get a notification of when our next Ultimate Supply Chain podcast is available. Thanks very much for tuning in. Thank you.